I recognize myself for five minutes. In March 2020, five scientists published the proximal origin of SARS-CoV-2, which effectively shut down the lab leak theory. However, the authors relied more on political implication than actual science. In uncovered emails, Dr. Rambo, one of the authors of Proximal Origin, stated that their conclusion downplaying the lab leak theory would limit the chances of new biosafety discussions. Dr. Parker, in your expert opinion, is opposition to increased biosafety or biosecurity regulations common amongst the scientific community? I, I, I don't think it's common. Well, I think I, virologists, I, 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 think, I think virologists, scientists, everybody working in the infectious disease um, research community, in, including hazardous pathogens, they, they want to do this work safely and securely, those that I know in the United States. I don't think they're trying right. to avoid uh, o oversight, but in their defense. The oversight system is becoming very fragmented. It's confusing. Well, are, are you aware of the proximal origin paper? I am. Do you think it's problematic that the author's conclusion may have been in part based on the fact that they wanted to avoid more strict biosafety guidelines? You know, I, I, uh, th those emails are black and white, and I'll you know, let the committee right. interpret those emails. Dr. Yes, do you agree that constructing scientific conclusions to avoid increased biosafety regulations is inappropriate? Conceptually, hypothetically, yes, such an action would be inappropriate, but I am not making a judgment about whether that happened in this instance. The authors were aware that the Wuhan Institute of Virology was conducting risking gait and function research with coronaviruses under questionable biosafety conditions, including in BSL-2 laboratories. They were also aware that this research could be done without leaving a trace. Troublingly, the U.S. government also knew about these concerns. In January 2018, the State Department warned that the Wuhan lab had serious biosafety issues, specifically that they were serious that there were serious shortages of appropriately trained technicians and investigators necessary to operate its laboratory. They also noted the research of coronaviruses aiming to make them more transmissible. So Dr. Parker Dr. Parker, to safely conduct this kind of research, is it important to have trained technicians and investigators? It is important to have a skilled workforce, have high containment labs that are supported by appropriate operations and maintenance, they have the right biosafety right. officers, they have the right building engineers for any work with hazardous pathogens. I agree. Would you fund a lab that has a shortage of properly trained technicians and investigators and was operating at a low biosafety level? No. Dr. Yassif, what about you? Is it important to have properly trained staff while operating a high containment laboratory. Yes. Dr. Parker, do you know if the State Department told the rest of the government about these warnings? I'm sorry, I didn't hear quite Do here. you know if the State Department told the rest of the government about these warnings? I'm not aware. Uh, I'm the, the only thing I'm aware of is what's been in the media. Do you think that there's a lack of coordination between government agencies regarding biosafety and biosecurity threats? <laughs> I think there's a lack of coordination overall in, in, in a lot of our um, pandemic preparedness and biodefense efforts just at large. And we need, that's why leadership is so important. Um, and that's why actually in my written testimony, I do talk about the need for a single uh, focal point somewhere in the federal government that, that um, uh, can be the focal point for biosafety and biosecurity. So it's clear that China has actively sought to conceal and suppress information related to COVID-19. Dr. Parker, how can we hold foreign laboratories accountable and ensure they are complying with international biosafety standards? That's one of the challenges we, we already, we talked about earlier um, that enforcement is extremely difficult. And we have to, that's where at, at the moment, our, our best tool is to recommit to international diplomacy, work with, work with our strategic international countries and begin a dialogue to um, make sure that all member states and the WHO, United Nations uh, family, are taking on their responsibilities for managing, uh, responsibilities and accountability for, for managing and overseeing this important research. It, it, every country has got to assume that responsibility um, and accountability for that. Okay, very much. Uh, Dr. Yassif, would you like to answer that in my remaining few seconds? 
No, I have nothing to add. Thank you, sir. Okay.